So Chad Crow is joining me. He was with uh, Farm Credit Southeast Missouri. Uh, a pleasure to first to meet you, and secondly to have you here today. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Well. I have known about Farm Credit for years. I have a friend who uh, works for Farm Credit and has for about 20 years uh, out in Virginia. So I, I have just like the tiniest amount of knowledge of what you are, uh, not as a person, but as an entity. Uh, why don't you tell us what you are in, in 12 counties here in southeast Missouri and what you folks do? Absolutely, Brad. What we are, we're a co-op. We're a, a co-op owned by our members. Our members are our farmers. Our farmers are uh, the lifeblood of our business. We're nationwide, even in Puerto Rico. Um, our association is 12 counties in the Boot Hill. Um, we take care of pretty much agriculture. Anything you can do uh, on the farm, we can finance. Uh, we want to finance, and, and that's that's our bread and butter. Um because you have a lot of counties to cover, and these counties are kind of big, uh, part of your job is traveling, I would assume. And, yes, you say that it is. Uh, what are some of the things that you are doing as you travel to the different offices? Or how are you trying to be there as a, uh, to assist them in what they are doing? Um, absolutely. We, we want to put our farmers first. Any way we can help financially benefit them to move their operation forward. Um, any way to transition from generation to generation, finance purchases, um, we are there for them. We have seven offices in our 12-county area. Um, we have two lenders per office. Um, we have a great staff. It's a very tenured staff. Um, our culture is very laid back. We try to take a no-nonsense, common-sense approach to credit. Um, if it's secured, if it cash flows, financials look good, we want to get it done. You know, I've talked to others uh, and how the last couple of years have played out for their businesses. Have you folks had to be uh, creative as COVID kicked in and now where we are with it? Absolutely. Uh, COVID impacted everyone. And luckily, you know, a lot of farmers are on a tractor by themselves. So when it comes to raising crops, uh, they were able to continue on. Now, our business, uh, we worked in shifts. We had the A team and the B team. And uh, we tried to keep the A team away from the B team so we could keep the ball rolling. Um, we want to ever service our employees. We've implemented uh, working from home abilities. Uh, so every one of our staff members have the ability to work from home. We have VPNs. As long as you've got good Wi-Fi, uh, we can tap in. And it's not exactly like being at the office, but it's as close as you can get. Well, it just sounds like you've done a masterful job of that, or at least as good as one could expect uh, for the conditions that you had. I think back to growing up in Iowa, which, of course, is heavily farm country. And although my, my dad was not into farming, his uncle was. And whenever we would go visit uh, my uncle in Oxford Junction, Iowa, it was such a treat to be on his farm. And it was, it was small. He ran it by himself. Uh, I think he farmed uh, well into his 80s. Uh, wow. He lasted into his <laughs> lower 90s, and part of that was probably because of hard work. But you have a lot of farmers who have, have been doing it for a long, long time. Uh, they're turning it over at times to, to sons or daughters, mm -hmm. uh, and that means there's some people who need some help. Right. And you have a seminar coming up that I think is right <laughs> Right, right where it needs to be for these people. Why don't you tell us a bit about it? Okay, um, absolutely. On Wednesday, uh, January 19th, starting at uh, registration at 845, we're going to have a seminar. Uh, it's for our Ag Sunrise program members. Um, the program will cons uh, will end about 1.30 or 2, and we have three speakers that are going to be there, um, namely Gary Madison. Gary Madison is uh, a gentleman from the Farm Credit Council who has a very good pulse on what's going on in Washington ag-related. He's going to share what he knows, uh, tips. Uh, locally, we have uh, CPA Brian Menz. Uh, Brian's very well known, uh, very good at what he does, and will give uh, best financial practices. Joe Blanton, attorney here from Sykeston, long-term, long-time Sykeston name, basic estate planning and entity planning. Um, you can never start too early to do the transition. Uh, too many times we see farmers come in our office and say, hey, I'm thinking about 
retiring next year, they go talk to their accountant and attorney, oh, wait, I should have been doing this five years ago. So they have to prolong that retirement. And we want we want to eliminate that and help transition that and just anything we can do to help that, we want to. Well, many have uh, gone by the old adage of information is key. Mm -hmm. And if you have that information, there's lots of things you can do with it. So I would think that this seminar... Uh, it would be the perfect place for people. What what led you? What made you think that this was important to do and to do it now? Our customers, um, our clientele, our member owners, um, customer owners, have reached out to us and said, you know, this is on our mind. This is what we need information about. How can you help us navigate it? Because it's not simple. It's not easy. Tax law is always changing. Entity law is always changing. And you need to have a solid resource. Um, and I believe these three gentlemen are. Um, they're very well respected in our area. Um, we take what they say and uh, we use it as much as possible. And it's just good guidance. You know, I, I was listening to someone the other day talk about what it took uh, if you wanted to get into and have a photography business. And she listed about 12 different things that she had to do that weren't photography right. <laughs> related or actually taking the photographs. And, you know, I don't assume that there ever was a time where all the farmer had to do was hop on his tractor and ride around for 14 hours in a given day. But certainly now there's a whole lot more to it, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, I have a whole lot of respect for farmers in general every one of us are busy every one of us have stress every one of us have jobs that we have to fulfill but when it comes to farming you wear so many hats you are producing you almost have to be a chemist you have to be a marketer um, not to mention a manager of labor which is terribly tough these days um, I'm sure you've seen it in your business where it's tough to get people to work well imagine on a farm uh, same thing and and, and the marketing piece of it is very much a gamble. Um, it's tough to market your crop. It's tough to produce your crop. Uh, it's tough to do your financials. They're almost their own accountant, financial planner, um, not to mention having families. So there are multiple hats that a farmer wears uh, on top of just planting a crop. Well, and they are always probably the first thing they do when they wake up. They open up that window and say, what's the weather like Absolutely. today? And and they listen to those forecasts. Uh, I have a sister that lives in uh, northeast Iowa. Although she does not farm, she lives on property that once was a farm. And uh, in August, they had a big windstorm come through and took out a lot of the corn. Mm -hmm. And there's you, you can't get corn to stand back up after it's laying down. <laughs> That's right. And That's right. Uh, so those pressures that they have are going to be there, but they can be relieved of some of that by knowledge. Mm -hmm. Am I planting the right crop? Do I use the right fertilizer? When do mm -hmm. I put it in? So there are so many things that these people are going to help them. We're going to have a new title here in a couple of weeks, aren't yes, you? Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, congratulations for your promotion. Thank you. I uh, have some very big shoes to fill. Um, Alan Hicks, who has been a fantastic uh, co-worker and employee, is retiring at the end of the month. Uh, February 1st, I'll become the chief credit officer and looking very much forward to it. Well, it's always great when we get promotions at work, and uh, we uh, hope only the best for you. Now, let's go back to one of the key speakers that you're having coming in. Uh, I, I don't want to elevate one over another, but Gary Madison uh, spends his time uh, getting the farm credit message and then learning things from politicians. Uh, what types of things does, does he try to get uh, from them and then certainly to get to them. Right. Absolutely. Uh, that's a great question because, you know, the Farm Credit Council is who Gary works for, and the Farm Credit Council represents the entire nation of farm credit, trying to tell our message of what farming really is uh, to the legislators, to congressmen, senators, um, all of those uh, members that might not have come from a rural area. Uh, they still have con constituents in those areas, and we want them to be well aware of the challenges uh, that we're facing in an ag community. And when you have a rural area such as we have here, really kind of a small area, it's important because you can't get that message out yourselves. You have to have somebody who knows what it's like to be farming in, in a rural part of, of uh, southeast Missouri, and that's ultra important to you, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, you know, there's there's children in elementary school that think milk comes from the grocery store. 
Uh, <laughs> and we want, we want to debunk that. You know, there is a cow out there that's making that milk, and, and we want to get that message out and, and to relay to our uh, customer owners what is going on in Washington, what is going on with the farm bill, how is that going to impact their operation for generations to come? And and that's what Gary does. He is uh, the liaison between rural to Washington, from Washington to rural. Okay, uh, coming up, you, you have the seminar, It's and it's part of your Ag Sunrise. Uh, it's not that you want to distinguish too much between the younger farmers and the older farmers, but this one definitely is for those who haven't farmed a lot, and they're relatively young when it terms to, right. of the... Uh, the full body of farmers. Tell us a bit about Ag Sunrise. Right, you're exactly right. Everybody is welcome to the seminar, uh, but we we are spearheading this for our Ag Sunrise program, and our Ag Sunrise program uh, was something that our customers uh, wanted, needed. Uh, it is very tough to start farming. It's very tough to transition from generation to generation. And we saw the need. Uh, we made it happen that we can give less strenuous uh, constraints and credit needs and qualifications for young farmers to get in. Um, there are a lot of young farmers that have a very good uh, pedigree behind them that will make sure that it's going to be a viable operation in the future. And we wanted to be on the ground floor of these young operations starting from the transition. Um, it was very difficult. You know, when you, when you basically have nothing and you start farming, it's very difficult. So we had to change and we had to adapt to make sure that we could work with what programs are out there, whether that be with FSA, uh, MoBux, uh, the state of Missouri uh, funding treasure, and, and get these young farmers in our doors we don't want to be a flash in the pan we want a long-term relationship with them until they retire well we know that it's just important that you get some of these details uh to where they work for you you know if you can get more bushels out of that uh, bushels of corn out of Mm -hmm. that field that's more money for you and sometimes that may be uh it's happening because you have information right and, and that's what we're trying to provide. Um, you know, Joe uh, Blanton and Brian Menz, they're going to go over best uh, financial practices. Brian Menz going to work with uh, the Ag Sunrise program to let them know, hey, why why do we need year-end balance sheets? How does that play into your tax returns? What does that do for accrual accounting? All of those things, there's a reason. There's a why, be- why behind we ask for this, that, and the other. Because primarily, a lot of times, we have somebody checking us. We have reviewers. We're very much reviewed and regulated. So we want to do it right. We want you to see the progress. And you can see progress with consistent, good financial information. Um, Brian's going to expound on that. Joe knows um, and works diligently with Brian when it comes to uh, setting up entities, the uh, impact and the pitfalls of What happens with estate planning, taxes, um, capital gains, whatever it may be, to try to mitigate that to put more in your family instead of it going to Uncle Sam. Um, He is is very knowledgeable. A lot of his business here lately has been transitioning a lot of estates uh, from generation to generation. So they wanted to hear that, and, and that makes me feel good that the young farmer wants to know right now how can we make an entity set up beneficial for us not not 40 years from now now yeah it is so uh, interesting for me of course coming from farm country uh, of traveling you know basically from Sykes and all the way to St. Louis and just seeing those fields out there and sure some of those crops are for animals some are for human consumption and it's just a good thing. How do they how do they keep doing this? And so even me learning here about some of the things that take place is, is rewarding for me. And you folks have been busy because you are partners with the people that uh, that you work with. And this is a financial partnership. <laughs> Tell us a bit about the, the reward that you have for them. Absolutely. Um, every year we pay back to our customer owners a patronage. Uh, this year it's going to be another record, uh, $8.25 million going back to our customer owners. Uh, so to put that in perspective, if you were at another lender, they'd go to the owners of that institution. 
Well, our owners are our farmers, are our customers. So basically, uh, on average, it reduces their interest rate by about 1% effectively. Um, so it's coming at the end of January, beginning of February. We'll have dinners. We'll have lunches. We'll have uh, just a myriad of things that people will attend and get their checks, and we love to see them and, and give them back a little bit of the patrons that we made money, so they make money being part of our co-op. You know, Joe Bob is here with me. We're trying to figure out how we get to one of those lunches. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, we don't we don't seem to have those at our business here. <laughs> <laughs> we may not have a check for you, but you need. But us. we can still count. Okay, thanks. Uh, let's uh, one more time. Let's go over the the details of the seminar and who is invited. Sure. Um, you know, it's for our Ag Sunrise customers. Anybody's pretty much welcome. Uh, knowledge is key. Wednesday, January nineteenth. Uh, registration starts at eight forty-five and will conclude uh, at two p.m. And this is held at uh, the Clinton Building lunch will be served and we have three fantastic guests being uh, gary madison brian Menz, and joe blanton well if you are uh, know of somebody who you feel would benefit from this and certainly be the great place for them to be that day uh, chad it's been great uh, learning more about farm credit and some of the things that you folks do and to meet you you have a good day thank you sir thanks for okay having me. again want to thank uh, joe bob